All right. Welcome to Bigger Than the Game with Dermy and Jose. I'm Dermy Dove. I'm joined by my tag team partner, Mr. Jose Ruiz. What's going on, man? Dermy, what's going on, dude? How you going? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. And, uh, you know, it's something, it's maybe one of the more interesting and unique uh, episodes we're doing either on our YouTube channel or our podcast feed because June 17th will mark 30 years since the infamous Bronco chase. Yes. And it's crazy that it's been 30 years, but I think one thing that's really unique is everyone, one part of the story is obviously OJ and what's going on there, but what do you always hear? It cut into game five of the 94 NBA finals. Rockets at Knicks. The series is tied at two apiece. And OJ, 95 million people watching this slow speed chase. Yeah. It puts the game kind of takes a back seat. And something for me, Jose, is up until I've only seen clips, I remember this day, but honestly, to rewatch it, I've only getting, gotten clips, so I think it's cool that we're going to kind of see this game and see how it was covered, like, 30 years ago. Yeah, no, I, I thought, when you when you told me the game was on, like, I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. And again, this is something, we've talked about this off the air, obviously, and, um, this is something a little different. Like, we're not just going to focus on the game. Again, the name of this podcast is bigger than the game, right? Like, there are things that are much bigger than the game. And obviously, what was going on June 17th was was a lot bigger than just sports in general, you know. And I remember watching this, Jeremy. I, mean, I was watching this game live, and, and I can just remember just when they were cutting back and forth. And we'll see all of that here in this episode, man. So that's why I'm excited. But I remember just being blown away. You know what I mean? Like, just blown away because this is the NBA Finals in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. mid-90s. Mar Albers on here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the – this is what we grew up watching. Like, this was the great basketball that we grew up in the 90s watching. And for it to cut away to something so crazy as, you know, that Bronco chase. And it was just something that I would never forget in my lifetime. It's like you almost had to be there to to kind of, like, understand. And, again, like, this was something that I've never seen before. This is pre obviously social media. This is pre all of that stuff. Like this is something I had never, ever seen before. And it was just mind blowing. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to kind of watch it with everyone else and just share our thoughts on this there. Yeah, me too, man. And and it's something because as we see 30 years later, you know, OJ passed away April of this year. So a lot of things are coming up on it and it brings up just like what this and really, you know, the murders and it's that tragedy. It happened June twelfth. So that's Sunday night and this is a Friday night. But really what takes this to the next level, it makes it the trial of the century and yeah. makes it just something that connects everything. Celebrity, race, domestic violence, true crime, reality T V, sports, it all is molten into one thing at Hollywood, LA. Everything combines to make this the biggest story maybe one of the big stories of all time. Yeah. And I think what takes it to that level, this was a big story, but this Bronco chase and what happened that day made it bizarre and made it just crazy. And you kind of knew, you know, I was young when this happened. And I remember this day, you know, my birthday is June 29th. This was the last day of school. Everyone thought, you know, Hey, Jeremy, you're the man. We're going to give you a party <laughs> at McDonald's. And that's there how we the school year. I was like, I'm special. I feel good. I feel blessed. And I'm going to watch NBA. I'm a young fan getting into it. And then it was, I'm not getting the NBA. And I kind of knew as a young kid, I was like, this is going to be, this is weird. I didn't know for the next 15 months of my life, I would see OJ Simpson every freaking day. But that's what happened. So this is a, this is something that is the reason why it's always still talked about. And for this 30th, all the new documentaries, everything is going to happen. So th- this is a unique day in really not just sports history, but American history. Absolutely. Like definitely American history. And, and I, I, yeah, I remember, man, I was, I was what, 13, 14 at this point, And I was all into the, you know, NBA. I was all into, I was like in the prime of like my sports watching, yeah. I guess you want to call it. And, I was just all in, right? All in on every sports center that was on NBA tonight or whatever show it was. Like I was just all in. And, you know, obviously this is a, 
you know, again, like you mentioned, like school was over at this point. Like I could stay up and watch these games with no problem. And I was just all ready for these finals, you know, and it was a, a good finals matchup too at that. And, you know, to be in New York and Madison Square Garden, this was like, I know all, you know, Knicks have great history, you know what I mean? Like, especially MSG, but this is like that 90s Knicks team and it, that all these games were, were awesome games to watch. And, you know, you got Hall of Fame players on the court, you know, watching them go at it. You got Hakeem and Ewing going at it. Like, it was just so many storylines just built into this series alone. And then all of that didn't matter, right? Because when that Bronco chase started to happen, it was just all about OJ at that point. And you can tell. And we've done episodes on OJ Simpson here on this podcast. Check the archives if you haven't Check. watched them. And it's just, you know, the the moment that this all started to take place, it was just like, man, like, this is something totally different. I don't think I'm ever going to see this again. And that thinking was correct because I've never seen anything like this. And we won't see it again. Right, before or after. And it, it, it was just, again, I just didn't know at my young age that I was watching history. Right, absolutely, and and history it is, and you know, just a little backstory. What, what makes it interesting, and I'm, what I think will make this episode and this rewatch interesting, is O.J. Simpson. You know, after his great football career, went into movies. He's a pitch man, went into broadcasting. So with NBC Sports, he had been doing football coverage. So a lot of people who are there at the NBA Finals, this is now just not just. OJ, the celebrity, the athlete, the pitchman, the actor. This is OJ, the colleague, the friend, yeah. the co worker as well. So it's very personal for a lot of people, a part of this broadcast. And just, man, you know, I'm obsessed with the OJ trial and it's just fascinating. And just the stories about, I've heard, listen to Bob Costas, you know, talk yeah. about this and how Ahmad Rashad who was good friends with OJ. OJ was in his wedding to Felicia Rashad. Ahmad's walking around the bowels of Madison Square Garden, emotional and just shook. And at one point you can see Ahmad. And then I was like, man, you can tell in his face, like he's, he's soldiering on, but you can tell he's worried. And like, you know, Dick Ebersol, Costas, these people knew OJ and called him friend. And in fact, we found out, you know, years later, at one point, AC's driving, and they yep. have the game on. So it really hits close to home for this broadcast. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, and you, you probably know this a little better than I do, didn't he try to call Bob Costas? He did. He did. Yeah, yeah I saw an interview about Costas. He was talking about that, and, you know, I don't think the call went through or something like that. They or, didn't believe him. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. He didn't think it was him, and, you know, and that could have been something else. And even Bob Costas was like, I don't know why he was calling me, but – you know, it, it is. This was the point, Jeremy. Also, because we are, like you mentioned, like we're five days into the double murder and all this stuff. Like, you know, you're you're formulating an opinion on what's going on with all this, and you know, OJ making his statements. And this is the day where I was like, this dude, obviously, he did it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that was my my thought process watching this. Like, wow. Like, I obviously I didn't watch OJ Simpson play. I don't even think I might have called his, the end of his broadcasting career, his sideline reporting or whatever. Like, I, I didn't see him in the booth or anything like that. I definitely saw him in like those naked guns and all that. I knew, I knew right. how I knew how big OJ was. Don't get me wrong. I mean, maybe not like the older guys that probably knew him, watching him play and things like that. But I just remember I knew he was a big star, man. And I was just like, when this started to take place, watching this, and I was like, oh my god, like this dude, man, like. He's running from the law. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, man, like, that's that's a shame. But like, this dude did it, and now nah, he's on the run. So, for us, we're going to be watching the game, but also talking about the broadcast and giving our opinions, looking at, wow, how they were handling it in June 17th of 94 and talking about in that time frame, will we have done the same thing? And also given like we do here on Bigger Than The Game, past to the present, looking at how it would be different now. So we're going to give all that. So this is going to be about the game, but also just about this coverage and what was going on. So we're going to queue it up for you. We're around in the second quarter, and it's tied at 32 all. And here we go. Look at that, yep. 
Let's not forget, like, it was 32 all. This game was pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, first mm-hmm. quarter. So, again, we can talk about all the stars that are in this series alone, man. Like, it, it was just, you know, it was just a good game already. And it was the big game, right? You know, the winner of game five and a 2-2 series tied usually, you know, ends up winning the series. And um, both teams knew this, you know. And this was this was big-time game in Madison Square Garden. Well, you know, a guy who's a friend of the show, friend of ours, came on our YouTube channel, but on our podcast, Jack Silverstein. Shout out to Jack. Hey, Jack. I know he's had some discussions with us and other people on Twitter because this is the first year post-MJ that if MJ was in this finals, they would not have – like, they wouldn't have cut away or MJ – the finals would be on the big screen. They wouldn't have put – the game on the little screen do you agree with that oh no 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 uh, it could have been magic johnson and the lakers versus larry bird and those celtics which we just did an episode on the 84 finals check the archives but they would have cut away from that you know what i'm saying like they would have cut away from jordan they would have i don't care who was playing because again i think also what you mentioned earlier i think it's it's something that's not really talked about a lot and again like this was nbc you know what i mean and oj what worked for nbc and had a lot of to be honest a lot of good relationships with a lot of these guys you know oh, yeah. so it was it was i think that played a part in it a big part in it too like and don't get me wrong like i think if this was on you know like cbs or something they're still cutting away cuz it was just that big of a moment yeah um every i think cbs cuts away quicker yeah yeah be- because there's not a connection to him he's not a you know an employee so it's just he's oj the celebrity so i think they cut in quicker i mean you look at it the super bowl was in january that was super bowl 28 cowboys bills now that's a rematch, but still, it's the Dallas Cowboys, and that team was popular. That game got 90 million viewers. Yeah, the Bronco Chase got 95. So it outdid the Super Bowl. Yeah, and just think about that. Like you know, the Super Bowl is that one moment in the year where those ratings are are probably unmatched uh, for right. the most part for the rest of the year in any program. And you know, for that to to get even five million more viewers. It, it says a lot. And and I think I agree with you there because I think there had to be a little bit of hesitation. Like, if we show this Bronco chase, this dude can never work for us again. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and here we are. We're looking at live pictures of Interstate 5 in Los Angeles. We believe that that wow. vehicle, which is being trailed by a phalanx of California Highway Patrol cars. And this is and Tom Brokaw breaking it, Tom Brokaw. This isn't like, you know what I mean? Like, earlier today. Dan Patrick or something like this is mm. this is Tom Brokaw and this is important to remember that it's one thing that I get tripped up on all the time is is the East Coast West Coast time yeah so pretty sure the game I don't know about the pregame but the game probably started you know eight maybe a little bit after eight o'clock it's five o'clock in the West Coast time five o'clock West Coast time for this day when it comes to OJ was around the time that uh, Robert Shapiro, Robert Kardashian had that press conference, and Kardashian reads what you know we believe at the time to be the suicide letter. Yeah. That's what NBC's going to start the game is OJ is missing. He didn't show up. He got charged with double murder, and then around like tip off, he's on the run, and there's a suicide letter. Is he going to commit suicide? What's going on? So that's that's where we're going at, and that that's why when you hear Brokaw come in at this point, this is for them their first time. Oh, here's the Bronco. First, we've heard there's been a 911 call from this vehicle. Yeah, and even at the same press conference, it's announced that he's a fugitive of the law. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was definitely documented and, and put out to the And if you, you know, it was clearly stated if you assist Mr. Simpson, you will be arrested as well. You know, yeah. and at that point, you're like, man, this this is real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not looking good for O.J. Simpson. And then, you know, the game kind of like, because it happens in life all the time, right? Like, a game kind of like takes you out of that. And, you know, you kind of just focus on the game and, you know, just you don't have to worry about all this negative stuff. And then, but even when you're watching this game, boom, like, the game stops for a moment. And, and they're letting you know what's going on here. Well, I want to know, because, like, what you think, because we remember a time before, we both had that memory of before streaming, before social media, so we remember a time where there were commercials, but I think it's interesting 
there wasn't really a smooth transition. Yeah. Uh, at least according to this, it goes right to like it's like a, a charge call and Marv Albert and it's kind of like boom, right to Tom Broke call and you're getting this. So it's and and now there's no second box here. It's just all OJ, which is surprising to me. Right, because the game is going on right now. Mm-hmm. And as we can see, like you know, he's at the free throw line, and you know this. We were, we, I mean, it, like a couple minutes went by already at this point, and you know, like, and we didn't even get to see any of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my, I'm also curious, like, what the NBA's reaction was to some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're cut, you're cutting away from our finals. Like, you know, what are you doing? Probably, you know, in a That's market a this, in a market this big in New York, like, you know, like the NBA execs or whoever. Were not happy. They couldn't have been happy about that. And we know how David Stern, and I feel like I've read some things about that. I know I, I should have, I have Dick Ebersol's book. I, I should have looked and see, but you know how David Stern is in the marketing genius or how he was. So, yeah, I, he's probably, but I mean, also, it's so bizarre. It's so crazy. It's taken so many t- weird turns. I mean, they say, like, you know, that nothing's crazier than real life. Yeah. What's a bigger example than what happened? Like, we know with the rest of the trial and stuff, but just this day alone, it's insane. Like, could you be mad? Right, because you're getting viewerships. Now, now people want to see this chase probably, and, you know, they're probably sticking around just for that. So now you're getting a non-NBA fan and, like, you know, dad, whatever, whoever's watching the game, and they're like, yo, they're cutting away from OJ. Like, to OJ, what? And then everybody's gathering around now probably watching this. And as we mentioned, 95 million viewers, that's a big-time number, man. That's a big-time number for NBA Finals. That's a big-time number. Obviously, 94 was the biggest number in any event. So. Well, we also, though, 95, as 95 total. So, you know, like, so ABC has it with, like you said, the heavy, you said Tom Brokaw. They had to have him because Barbara Walters is on ABC. I've looked at so much footage. You got Dan Rather and Connie Chung on CBS. Larry King is doing it on CNN. So all the heavy top dogs, the stars of the news divisions, are out there. So you can't roll out like you know young Brian Williams at the time. No. You got to put up Tom Brokaw because everyone else is doing it, and you got to compete. You know because you're losing the CNN, ABC, CBS, and all that stuff. Yeah. So it was, all, it was a who's who of the news man was was out here and. And, and trying to break the story and just kind of not even just break it at this point because it's happening, but just to make sure, like, their coverage obviously was the best so they can keep these viewers. I mean, even – and I, all this is minute because obviously the most important thing in the sad part is, like, two right. people lost their lives. But if you look at a perfect storm, I mean, it's summertime. And also, like I said, it's a Friday night. So even the people, like, the adults who are work, work throughout the week – they're off Saturday, so then they don't. They can stay up late and right. just take this in. Because remember, the East Coast is different than the West Coast. So on the East Coast, you're staying up watching all this stuff unfold, and it is crazy. Yeah, I mean, think about the West Coast. You know, folks like they're just getting off work, and right. they're probably like scrambling trying to get home, and like, what? What's going on? Like OJ Simpson, like so. They're not even catching a lot of those viewers probably at this point yet. You know what I mean? Like, because again, the time difference and all that. But I'm sure there's a lot of people starting to get glued in right now, all all over the country at this point. Yeah, and we look at the game. It's you know the Knicks are up by five, and it's uh, it's that that tight defense by the Knicks, man. And and there's something about this though, Jose. Like we grew up watching it, but it is. I mean, it's 30 years ago, but man, I mean. 34 to 39, like, that's, like, the first quarter, beginning of the second. Like, we're close. We're, like, four minutes left in the first half. Like, and and this Knicks team, and the Rockets play tough D, too. Yeah. But it's it's just, like, it's a knockdown, drag-out fight. It is, like, some tough basketball. Oh, yeah. This is almost like, you know, Lajvon came in to go to him, but... I mean, it just is. think about the players like that you do have on here. Like, look at the Knicks, and we all know how great defensively they were. You know, Pat Riley was the coach. He was locking everything down. But Houston, like you mentioned, you have Olajuwon's probably the best defensive center of all time. Robert Ory was a really good defender. Otis Thorpe was a good defender. You know, like Mario Ellie was decent. Like, so they, both teams, man, are have the ability to lock you down. And, you know, yeah, the Knicks had Ewing, but offensively, 
you know, to me, they were pretty easy to kind of lock down, you know, compared to like other teams in, in this era. So it was just a back and forth, man. Like who can hit you harder, man? They're going to they're going to be able to score. And right here you see one thing about this that like show like getting ready for this is the Knicks did enough. Like they had enough, I think, to win like this yes. year. After the, but right there, like Mason gets the offensive rebound from missed free throw. And then what's he do? He just he panics. He throws it to Ewing in the backcourt. Backcourt violation. This team was so much emotion. They would just make these mental. I think that was the difference, really, with this team. They those mental mistakes. Yeah, they played the Bulls tough. They played yep. like and like they go six, seven games with these teams. To me, the difference was you could say like that great number two to Ewing. I don't totally disagree, but I just think they had some controlled emotion and play like a little higher basketball IQ that could make the difference in some of these series. Right. Cause they, and it's not like a young team, you know what I mean? Like they, they had a lot of veterans on this team. So those mental errors were very surprising. You know, you obviously know they were well coached Pat Riley. So I, I just think, I think it starts with the superstar, you know, and we've known you and his shortcomings in the playoffs, you know, we go to Pacers with the, you know, finger roll and all that stuff. So it's like, there's so many mental – like, this team, when I think about this team, it's like, yeah, they were tough, but, man, like, they were – they were – they made a lot of stupid mistakes, you know, they down the stretch in big – yeah, in big games, yep. They, they couldn't control the, that, yeah. Yeah, like, Starks, Starks could make some amazing plays, and then he would just make boneheaded plays, yep. you know? Like, he – they were up and down all the time, this team, with that emotion. Yeah, look at that draft. Two key members of the Houston Rockets. That's a nice everyone, draft right there. Everyone I always remember, but I always forget Otis Thorpe was in that draft. Yeah, me too. Sam Bowie's second by That's a – yeah, he's a, he was a great player, great defensive power forward. And they, they trade him the next year for uh, for Clyde. Yeah. Which was a good trade for them. Yes. Got young Robert Ory. Yeah. Young Sam Cassell. Both drafted this year, I believe, right? Uh, Robert Ory was like 92. Cassell's okay. a rookie, though. Yeah. Uh, because Kenny Smith, I mean, we all know Kenny Smith inside the NBA. We love him. But he was getting worked by Derek Harper. Yes. And you can even see it in this game, like, you know, with early on. Like, so Sam Cassell, as a rookie, got that run because he wasn't going to let Derek Harper just push him around. You know, this is when hand-checking – Still is in the you know in the game and before it got outlawed and then bringing it back or is it outlawed? Who knows? But his hand checking was allowed and I do agree with younger people when they say oh they overhype hand checking. But yeah, hand checking like that wasn't the end all. You had to you had to, you couldn't mask being a bad defender just by hand checking. Yeah. But it was a, an advantage, though. If you were a good defender, you had that. It was a good advantage. Yeah, if you were strong, man, you were able to get your hands on somebody and just kind of move them around where you wanted them to. Like, that's definitely an advantage for sure. Oakley, Charles Oakley, yeah. I thought this was. I thought that was the Elijah one dunk for a minute there. No, no. Uh, Akeem actually hit, gets. He gets either. I don't know if he hits double digit turnovers in this game or close to it. He was turned. He he kind of had a sloppy first half. He didn't play well. You, Marvin, we are looking uh, once again at pictures of. Al Look at this. Well, I don't agree with this cutaway here. I don't care. Ninety four. Yeah. That's mid play. Yeah. That area. And we are told by the California <laughs> cutaway. That OJ Simpson is in that car holding a gun. So they, now they're confirming that. Like at first they were not sure if it was OJ or not. He wants. They're confirming it. To his mother, he wants to see her, um, but we don't know what. The Do you agree, though? I think to wait to a foul or a bucket or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, a stoppage of play. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Even it, I know it's June '94, but still, that was just like this hook shot miss. Someone's miss, going for yeah. it. TB was a, yeah, like I know, like it's it's. When Simpson realized he was about to be arrested, I think these guys were scrambling big time. Yeah. At the time. So well, look at this, man. People pulled over. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the time. Like, it's it's heavy traffic at this point in L.A. Look at that. They're blocking exits off. Like, look, people are watching. This is pre. Remember, 
I think now we would of course you're gonna have the phones out and watching, but people are hearing on the radio or it's just word of mouth and people are pulling over to go see this Bronco come by. Yep. Yelling yelling for OJ, having yeah. signs up at one point, you know. Yeah, we love OJ. It's it's such a different time than what even a few months later or for some people, what happened later this night, like the, the perception would change. But if you watch other footage throughout the week, it's still pretty split. A lot of people, it's not even split racial. It's just split where you have those who are like, well, he has too much to offer and too much to lose. But you see, with this cutaway, what we missed, now they're replaying it, there was a near fight that broke out starting with Mason and Elijah one. Elijah one gave a, a elbow. Yeah. And Mason got pissed and you know Yeah, Anthony Mason was a tough dude, but I went zero smoke with Hakeem Elijah. <laughs> I know. But see this is a uh, Elijah one who found religion, so then that's why he's still tough, but he's got calm. Elijah one a few years earlier, yeah, I think Anthony Mason's in trouble. He's still in trouble here, but he, he the Lajuan's cool and calm. At least that elbow was padded a little bit. True. Because if not, man, that would have broke some teeth. So, this is honestly my first time really watching like this, like when I prep like seeing this game. But I knew about this fight. Be, you know why? Because the 30 for 30 that we both loved that really showed how – unique and crazy this day was June 17th 94 the director years ago he was talking to Bill Simmons about this and he said he had the footage and he's like you know they cut away but people missed this crazy fight between the teams and I was like oh wow really and so this is like I can see it now I heard about it years ago and I think this goes back to like the point that we were making earlier there I mean it was where it's like as soon as something like this happened emotionally, this team like just goes over the top. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, and it's like, all right, they want to fight everybody, and then they're yelling at each other to calm each other down. You know, and they, you see this all the time. Ewing and every like John Stark's face, like for a turnover, or it's, it was just like, I get like you're a tough team. Like I 100% get that, but you have to, you have to have an ability to kind of like reel that in a little bit. And I, I. I it just this Knicks team is missing that. Like they, they, they had a lot of good leaders on this team. Oakley was a good leader, but he was another kind of like a hothead. You know, Ewing was obviously. We talked about that. Anthony Mason is like John Starks. You saw what happened with John Starks and the Pacers. Like, they, there's just not that like calming, hey. setting presence in this team. We know what happened in the second round. Even Derek Harper in that yeah. fight with JoJo English. Look at this great foul, Hart. Now, Robert Robert Ory's paying him back in my I mean he's yeah. you know no hard fouls, but Mason fouled Robert Ory hard in game yeah. four and really hurt him. Look at here we go. Bernie Maxwell's another dude I want yep. no smoke with. Max he's a he's a he's a tough dude, man. Yeah, Mad Max, yeah, John, you would lose that fight, brother. Yeah. You want Mad Max. But again, like any any little thing is going to set this team off, and then emotionally, they're just going to be unhinged, and and that's going to take away from their game, and they're winning, they're leading in this game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, see that Pat talking to John. Wow, he got flagrant. They've been thrown out of the game today. Oh yeah. He didn't think it was a flagrant foul. He thought it was just a good hard foul. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, and that time, I don't think that's a flagrant either. At that for that time, he went for the ball. See, I think uh, I, 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 I'm surprised they called it a flagrant, but I don't think it's not bad because I think he knew he couldn't block that shot. He was just, he was like, no hard foul. I mean, no, no easy buckets. Yeah, and I also think the refs are trying to like get a get a hold on this game, you know, After especially. What happened. Yeah. yeah. Here you go, right here. This is good. Yeah, he kind of grabbed his arm. I don't know. Yeah, double tech. Yeah, they're trying to clean this game up a little bit. Yeah. 
and especially with this Knicks team. Right. I think that and seeing it getting going and stuff, like, yeah, you got to be on it. But, you know, Knicks are up by nine. Got 20-something seconds left in the first half here. But, you know, we hear Matt Gukas was talking about how emotional they were. Marv Albert, obviously voice of the Knicks. Yeah. He knows how emotional this team is. It's an 11-point lead yeah. for the Knicks. And against the is, Knicks, that's like a 20-point lead. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Look at that. Triple team on Olajuwon. Ooh, nice move, Harper. Mm, so, Knicks up 11 going into the half here. Yeah. In this game five, their final home game of the season. But... I mean, I, this team, to, to me, this just, this should have been their title. Yeah. This is Bob Costas back at Madison Square Garden. Oof, look at that. Rocket. Young Bob. Mood. But before we talk about basketball, let's return to Tom Brokaw. Very somber. Report on the still developing O.J. Simpson story. And Big words by Tom here. Studio. Yeah. Bob, we are witnessing tonight a modern tragedy and drama of Shakespearean proportion being played out live on television in Southern California. That car contains O.J. Simpson and his friend Al Collins. They have been in touch with police AC. dispatchers. They are going. You know who he is. is. You know who the hell I am. Which will take them back into the heart of L.A. <laughs> we do now. I don't yeah, know they knew you before, but we never be forgotten, you forgotten, man. That comes from the California Highway Patrol. I, I think of that dispatchers. line he like often. I don't know why. Oh, because it's just it's it's like. All of this again. You got a feel for AC in this spot, yeah. like, but it's a funny line because I'm kind of like, I'm always like, do we got, do, are we supposed yeah. to know who you are? Because they know, then, like, like, maybe out there they did. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't think they did. Yeah. Then they made a call. Yeah, OJ in the car. But, I mean, OJ is the story of where he is. And they did kind of say, I think in one of those press conferences, they're like, we think, like, Gil Garcetti, the district attorney, was like, we think he was last with Al Callens, a former football teammate. Yeah. Always funny to hear, like, people who don't know sports talking sports. A football teammate. I'm like, oh, jeez. You can probably believe this in our modern popular Yeah, so, you know, looking back, right, you know, it's well documented how, you know, a lot of people were were really frustrated with, you know, with how the police handled this and just kind of allowing him to to drive where he wanted to drive there. I mean, and uh, obviously the police don't want like a high speed chase and things like that. Like they're very cautious of that, but you know, they're, they're just following him along, you know? And I know there was like threats of like possible, like suicide ideation by OJ, but you know, in the car talking about he had a gun and things like that. And, you know, it's documented the conversations that he had with the police officer or the negotiator, whoever it was. Um, but it, I, just I looking at this, I can still remember even back then, there, I mean, where I was like, man, like they're just letting them drive around. Like that's insane to me. Like, you know, they got people next to him. Like that's a very dangerous situation, and they just let it be. Well, I think it's the the the, the suicide, but it's, it's the celebrity factor is big, yeah. and then also Rodney King is. Two years, well, three years earlier it happened, and, given to a friend and then the riots, you know, that was two years earlier, 92. So all that, you know, was on LAPD's mind about that, like, now not just locally, they have a bad reputation with a lot of people nationally that are looked at. So I think that celebrity factor and, and, and the Rodney King, sadly, outweighs even him having the gun, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that, for sure. Um Police arrived. O.J. Simpson and Al. Yeah, Collins the LAPD at this point was trying to clean up. Got into this white you know, I don't want to say clean up their act. They definitely weren't doing that. But more of like the the perception of what we all had of the LAPD. Again, not living in LA, but just knowing you know all the stuff that was going on in the past three to five years. It, you know, they definitely they, they had a bad rap throughout the country. Beyond the outlook for this, and just uh, that's why I wanted to hear in Tom Bro. I think he's he nailed it though. This is a tragedy of Shakespearean proportion. I mean, it's hard to find somebody who was so beloved in the public eye and then take such a dramatic fall 
And yeah. they have that thing like the Q rating or whatever, like how you're beloved. I bet you if you do, you know, hell, the fall of 93, what people think about OJ Simpson, it's like probably 90% people just like him. And then, man, a few months later, what happens here? And he becomes one of the most infamous, one of the most disliked people of the second half of the 20th century. It is a, it's a, it's a dramatic fall. Yeah, it's, it's insane, man. And look at that, like, even like the overpasses, people are pulling over and just kind of watching. And this is like, you're living in the moment. Moment. This is pre-cell phone, right? Like this is nobody re- recording and like posting pictures while he's driving by. Like they're literally in the moment watching this. Just they just want to be there, you know. And, and it's an amazing thing to see. It's insane because there have been bigger, there, not bigger. There have been big murder situations. You know, you look at Charles Manson. You can look at like Ted Bundy and Jones, Ted, son of Sam. This is so this isn't the first time a murder case gotten attention. I'm not saying that, but you can see, starting with this night and then what happens with the trial, it's the birth of the true crime wave that we still feel today. It's the birth of reality TV. It's the birth of so much, all that celebrity, and like you said, like you know. Now is we know what would be happening now. The people, yeah, cell phone all over social media. To me, that you can point to this day and what we just saw that birthed all this. And really, the sad part is two people lost their lives, but this became a business. Really, the O.J. Simpson trial that was a business in itself, and it led to other businesses, in my opinion, which is the real messed up part. Right, I agree with that, and I, and I know we wanted to discuss this halftime coverage as well, but I agree with that point 100%, because I think what they saw in viewership, it wasn't for the game, you know what I mean? Like, and they understood that, and they knew if they can get something like this continuously, like, running and things like that, you know, they was going to bring big, big ratings, and, and I think the idea started a process of, like, that reality TV, and what can we, how can we get this attention even more, you know, and, and I think... Sadly, this tragedy did, did birth some of that stuff. Yeah. Now, once again, we're, we, we're not TV execs. We know it's a different TV time. It's not what it is now. This is June 17th of 94. But with all that happening, do you play the Pat Riley Costas interview or do you just keep it on bro call? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think. Bring out this within you. I think you can play this interview in game six. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at halftime, maybe another game if that happens. Um, I think you need to make this adjustment like on the fly, which they were doing, you know. And again, we talked about how much of a struggle it looked like it was going, but at least halftime, it kind of kicked off by that coverage. You know, you, you throw it over to Tom Brokoff. He kind of gives his, you know, a couple minute thing and yeah. I, I just think I don't even approach it that way at this point I mean, viewers do not want to do, talk about Pat Riley like you know uh, and I know yeah. Pat Riley's the godfather of the I NBA know, and all I that but and I've been around we wanted to know what was going on with OJ and I think uh, at this point they probably lost the some viewers when they just kind of switched over to CNN or something like that but yeah I agree I think this was the case of like they just don't know what's going on. Like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They're scrambling behind the scenes right now, even as this interview is going, to know what to do. And I think this was a mistake. You know, people that like, why are we playing this? Like, like you said, honestly, this could have been the deciding game. I still would be like scratch it, but like you said, you know, you have at least one more game coming up, right. and really they had two. You can't play this interview for halftime or pregame of the next game, like, because I'm just like, man, and I, Bob Costas is a great interviewer. Pat Riley's interesting. 30 years ago, I feel this way, and now I don't give a damn about what they're talking about here. I want to go back to the Bronco chase. Right, and it's all, like, subdual, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's all quiet, and they feel like they're whispering. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw that, too. As soon as they started the interview, I was like, they got a lamp back there? But, yeah, it, it's just, it, it was a mistake in this coverage, for sure, and, and a lot of mistakes in this. But, again, this was this was unprecedented, and, and you know, I, I, I just don't think they knew what they were doing. They couldn't handle this. Because, again, like, this has not been seen before, you know, and, and 
in t- in television in history. Like, like I know there was a lot of big time moments, but something like this in the moment where they were just like didn't know what to do back and forth. This was definitely a mistake. You know what hit me? Like honestly, it was a little bit before we started recording. No lie, I was like, is because I was just like dismissing it. We were getting ready, like doing research past couple days. Right before we got on, I was like, the only thing close would be, and I know you would, you've seen this clip so many times is it would have been 13 and a half, 14 years before this, the night that John Lennon got assassinated and Monday Night Football and yeah. Howard Cosell had that call. But, I mean, the difference was that, you know, that came in toward the end of the game. I think it was like the last few seconds left, they were going to go to see if they could make the field goal or not, and I think they missed it. Or It went to overtime, but it wasn't a whole game. It wasn't a buildup of all day. So it's nowhere near on that level as far as balancing coverage. But that's all I can think of that's like sim- close to this. I don't know yeah. about you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. And even but even that, like, it wasn't happening in the moment. Like, it happened. You know what I mean? Like, and they were just breaking the news. This was, it was actually happening. It was going on. And, you know, I don't, I, I can't remember. No, like that, that that's a really good that's a good example you know, I mean, um i i i was trying to think of like something else kind of close to this and I, I just don't i can't I think of it right now but what people say yeah i think that was a good one because that, that kind of shocked everybody and that was obviously a big time john lennon was big time as well so and that was a big stage in monday night football but even that, like, Monday Night Football was big, but it wasn't what it is today. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I think this is the NBA Finals, and for them to still cut away from that, I just think to me it still blows my mind. Like, just thinking about it again, even though we're watching it. No. And I think it's, it's just, you know, why we have these discussions. Because, like I said, people listening or people who don't know, this was not the first – big murder you know trial or murder situation that happened in our society it's not but there's you don't have to be the first to be something that's like what takes it to another level and i think that's what this did i mean i know we're coming up on it here we go cutting right back to the white bronco that is driven we believe but 30 years there's still new documentaries coming out everything oj is in the car at one point he said he had a gun to his head he's being pursued by california law enforcement officials there is the possibility and it is only speculation at this point that they are heading back toward oj simpson's home in brentwood where his mother is believed to be staying at one point oj simpson told a police dispatcher he wanted to see his mother let me ask you a question that might be, and forgive me if it's hard to answer. What do you think would have happened if they just, if they did cut him off at this point? Like, what do you think would have happened? Formally charged with two counts of Yeah, that is a good question. Um, his ex-wife and a young man. I don't think. Then left the scene, and now we're at this stage. Now obviously this is tough, right, to answer, because I, I don't know his mental mind state at this point, but I, I don't think he goes through with, you know, harming himself or whatever. I, I, I just don't. Um, no. I, I think, you know, he, he gets arrested. And I, maybe we even look at this whole trial differently. You know what I mean? Like, if that's the case. Because, again, the way he was let to drive home, was let out the car. You know what I mean? Like, this is, I mean, the man stated he has a, has a gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, in... in I mean, they always had, they had the house around it. They had everything ready to go when he pulled up there. But still, like, I, I think the way it just it just looked, like, it, it was just like, yeah, like, maybe he's not guilty because, look, he's just home and he just did whatever he had to do. Like, if he gets arrested on this freeway and it's like a smash, kind of like, you know, jump in front of him, push him away, like, you know, make him, I don't want to say make him crash, but you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. and, um, and lock them up right there and like in handcuffs in front of everybody. I, I, it's just a different perspective for everyone. And I, I think it puts a different light on this whole situation, this whole case. Well, yeah, and I, and I think I, don't, I, don't, I hate to say it, but just as, as a bystander looking at that case, you got to give credit to the defense team. Or I don't know if you just want to knock the prosecutor because this should be right or wrong. That should have been damning for him in the trial, and it wasn't even used really. 
You didn't even hear about it, yeah. No. And I, I don't know if they weren't allowed to talk about it or whatever, but that would have been, for me, one of the opening statements. Like, you know, if this man was, was, was not guilty, why is he running from the law? You know, and I know he could probably defend that whichever way, and, and rest in peace, Johnny Cochran would have probably figured a way to kind of defend that also. But, yeah, like, to me, like, that was damaging evidence right there. Like, that, you don't run away from, you know, the police if, if you're innocent. You know, and even if they want to come speak to you, like you just make that happen. You know, you don't, from my perspective, you don't have to run from the cops. And then he was clearly running from the cops and trying to figure out what was, what his next move was. See, it, it, so from my perspective, I get why he's running, and that doesn't mean he's, he's, and it doesn't mean a person, especially a person of color, I look at, I don't think that you're guilty because you run. But the perception is different, and we know, like, that's not what I think. Nowadays, people get that more. We have even more information about black people, minorities, and their relation with the with the police. It's even more out there. But it was out there then, but it's more out there now. And I think I get why you wrote, even. Let's say he was innocent. I don't believe he's innocent. Let's say he's innocent. He's guilty of something, regardless. Like right. you know. But let's say he's innocent. I get why you run, and especially cop with LAPD at that time and their bad history. It makes sense. Yeah, they, but, it, the history was bad for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so the game's obviously on the way, you know, after halftime and all that. But it's still that, you know, that somber feeling, man, like of of what's going on here and. You know, we're watching this game, and, I, you know, I can remember watching it live, obviously, and I was just like, man, like, what's next? Like, you know, like, what's what's going on with OJ? What's going to happen after this? And, you know, the game at this point is in the way. So I was I was wondering, I don't know if you remember or not, for you, um, I mean, because, like I said, it's a different time. I don't know if you had cable or you just had basic at the time. I don't know what you were you. I was at just basic at this point in my my house. We got cable the next year. Yeah, actually ninety five for sure. Next the next summer. So we still were at basic, but we we stayed here, and like on NBC. Did you stay or were you going around the horn? No, I stayed on NBC too. Like, and I I don't I can't remember, but. I, I know, like, I wasn't big into, like, CNN and stuff like that right at that yeah. age. So I, I, I just stayed here because this is where the coverage for me was at, you know. Because, again, I wanted to I wanted to watch the game, you know what I mean? Like, and but them flipping back and forth, like, just changed my perspective on the entire night. Like, it, it, it started off, like, being crazy excited for the game and, then it changed and like what's going on with OJ Simpson, you know, and then like I'll get these moments where I'm like, all right, I'm back into the game. Like, you know, it'll go a little long stretch here and then boom, it'll just get my interest right back to that OJ Simpson chase. So, yeah, I stayed here and I was just kind of getting all my updates from here. No, I got you. It's um, and I think it's important. I'm glad we, we talk about why NBC knowing him because back then now and into the future media people are competitive and a juicy story like that i'm not trying to say they don't have they feelings or emotions but a juicy story they're looking at like ooh ratings attention and getting yeah. a name out there which so i like, get too like you yeah know. right it's competitive cuz people yeah. want that scoop for better or for worse and a lot of times they want it too early and not getting all the facts but it's a competitive – the higher you get, it's very cutthroat and competitive. But I do believe if it was the NBC-OJ connection, and let's say ABC had basketball at the time, there wouldn't be the somber feel. Ah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be strictly like a news coverage. Like mm-hmm. this – every cutway feels like – every cutaway, excuse me, feels like – like a tragedy, man. Like you know what I mean. Which this is. Like don't get me wrong, but it's it just feels terrible. You know what I mean. Like and every time they cut away, Costas looks like he's about to start crying almost. Mm-hmm. You know, and like the the 
their voices are just very somber and it's just it's it's a sad situation and they're definitely painting it as like a sad situation but and like because you're right it's sad and because it's sad because of, of nicole and ron right, right exactly but i think if this is cbs or abc there they, there's no connection to oj but this is like the feeling is because you don't know, and that's why it's important for people to try their best to put themselves if they don't remember yeah. back in June of 94, because it's almost like we might be watching our friend die. Right. Like we don't know. You don't know what's to. happening. Yeah. Right. So it's a very different feel, which I'm not trying to call the other networks totally heartless, but you don't know OJ like that. Right. He's a celebrity. He's just that guy. Like, there's not a personal connection. So it's just, it's very unique. Yeah, because they don't know what's going to about to happen. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know how this is going to end. They don't know if he's going to do something to himself. If the police are going to do something to him. Like, nobody knows what's going on. And again, like to your point, these are his friends. You know, and when they're cutting away to that news, it's just like, man, like they're just waiting, just like everyone else. You know, there's no tape delay. There's none of that stuff. Like this is live and in action. You know, and it's it's a scary thing, I'm sure, for them as as colleagues of his, but you know, also like being friends of his, maybe they didn't believe like, all right, this dude couldn't have done that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. and at this point, it's literally hitting them. Like, it was hitting a lot of us. Like, he did it. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, he's actually guilty, and you know that's that's also probably rocking them too. Yeah. Um, it, it, that's a good point. It's it's like wow. Either you're thinking you're gonna, and there's a lot of feelings going on. Either you're thinking we might see our friend die. Wow, this guy I thought I knew. I would never have guessed a week or two ago he would be capable of committing, possibly committing double murder. Now it's starting to hit. It's, it's if you were pushing it off all throughout the week, you can't push it off anymore. No, nah, you're formulating an opinion at this yeah. point. Like, all right, like you see, there yes or no, and for a lot of well. I would say for a lot of people, it, it, this night made it guess. I, I think, honestly, Jose, in the moment, it's pretty split. Really? You like, think so? At, yeah, because, I mean, you see what happens when you see people. There's We love you, Juice. Juice, yeah. Juice, Juice. Like, And people are like, I think they're setting up. If you watch a lot of footage, and you've seen a lot of documentaries on this too, but like doing the research like over the past few months for different things, on this, I've seen like people at that throughout that week and up even here. It's a lot of I don't know, and a lot of like they're setting them up. And then because remember, local, especially we're seeing nationally what's going on locally, so we're getting that insight into them locally. And they're saying what the LAPD sets people up, blah 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 blah, and that's letting a lot of people know even more about their reputation. Yeah, absolutely. And then throughout all of this, the Knicks are playing really well right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just watching that Ewan with an amazing dunk there. They're they're locking the Lajuan down. You know what I mean? Like he's having a, a bad game. Ewan with that beautiful dunk, man. And this and is really not in his prime either. Exactly. I'm Tom Boom. Look at that. News in New York, and you are looking at live television pictures at dusk in Southern California, the white Bronco that you see in the now, freeway. I want people to remember we see it's 56 to 43 because at one point we're we're going to hear a cut like he'll announce the score and you'll get a vibe of how much we've missed like, yeah. like when we're going to be watching like this like so you miss a lot of the game Earlier, Which is Simpson told a police dispatcher unbelievable, that man. Like, and I, I get it. They don't have the box that they can just kind of like leave the game on right now. They're just cutting back and forth, and you know they're they're trying their best to, to keep the interest on both things. But it's it's the NBA, the the, the game is suffering for sure. But you know, I think honestly, because if this were you know, God forbid, it is, it is it's a tragedy what happened to Nicole and Ron. Absolutely. But if this were today, I almost feel like they would just keep it on here because we have social media. So that's not right here. Then my mistake, everyone. It's it'll come up soon though. Like when we take a big gap away from this game. But I think to my point, Jose, like 
because of social media and people can live tweet the game, I feel as they would just keep it on that even longer now because they know we have other options of getting the information. Yeah. Yeah, they can even split the screen. Like, you know, they can do so many things at this point now. But, yeah, I, right now they just don't have the technology to kind of do some of that stuff. So they're just bouncing back and forth. And just anytime they kind of get a break, they can just jump over back to that OJ thing. But if something were to be happening, the thing is this, like, clearly for them, I feel, and I don't know how you feel, Jeremy, about this, but clearly – the important story right now is these o, the OJ thing. So if something was to happen right now with this chase, they're cutting away no matter what. Yeah. Like no matter what's going on in the game, it can be, you know, this great play. They're cutting away from that. You know, right. I don't think it's the opposite. I don't think if they're covering OJ and something great is happening in the game, they're going to cut away from the OJ thing. No, no. I, I I think they're they're clearly have made their minds like that the OJ is the most important thing right now. And also, um, I guess, looking back, we had this opportunity. You know he's got to end somewhere. Yeah. So you're wondering where, who, is it they're going to end it for him? Is he going to stop somewhere? And then you know that's when it gets down to the nitty-gritty, too, because then it's negotiation time or it's action, whatever it may be. Like I say, and I'm saying this not – there's lives, there's people's families and stuff, but when you're looking at the mindset of news people, they want right. a story. Right. And they, it's a story. They, they can't miss the big the big event. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because it, it's comparing it to today, there, I mean, where it's like they, you know, maybe live, they don't catch it on TV, but they're streaming something online or, you know, on their Twitter feed or whatever, like, they, they have it on there. Like, so they're technically not really missing anything but here like they they if they if he pulls over right now and he's pulling up to his house like they they can't miss that you know what i mean like at this point like they're already this much into this coverage like there's no way they can miss any little moment yeah right now he's just driving down the highway but once he gets off the exit like things like that like they're boom like we got to stay with this we don't know what's about to happen well, because it's it's in a different way, but it's it's not. It's similar because, like I said earlier, it all connects. You know, when we look at our pocket, and we do it through a sports and culture kind of a lens, but it's when we talk about, wow, we've experienced some of them, and we look back at the past, it's like we watched this incredible game or player that we know they were great, that we appreciate this game or this moment or this, the size of it, and sometimes like, oh yeah, we know this is a big deal, sometimes it takes a while, and I feel like all them, while in the moment, it was scrambling around, all these network people, they knew this was, this was a, you, it was weird, but a historic moment, a generational moment. Yeah, this was something, again, uh, unprecedented, and and they knew it, and they yeah. knew it, and they made sure that like, yeah, we were not missing on, on a lot of this important stuff um which i don't know like i i kind of appreciate <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what i mean like I, I do like and um look at that so i'm let me ask you this Jeremy. so say you know like say oj simpson pulls over on the highway right and mm-hmm. do you think like they cut away and just watch whatever's going on. You know what I mean? Like, say there's, like, police around the car or whatever. You think they go live and just watch that? Yes. Man, that would have been something else, man. Because there's a stoppage. Right. So then what's going to happen now? So something, the cops, is he going to give himself up? That's, you got to get that. God forbid, was he going to do something? Is he going to – like, you don't know – you know, I don't even right. want to think about it because like, it's so bad to put it out in the air, even though it's 30 years ago. But it's just like what can happen here is interesting, you know, like and exciting. I'm Tom Brokaw in New York. You're looking at a Ford Bronco, and O.J. Simpson is almost back home. He's yeah, I was about to say, he looks like he's uh, he has a gun. off the his highway. His mother is at his Brentwood estate, and apparently his so wife on – if you're looking at this, is driving him there it's June 17th. West Coast time, I mean, yeah, it's probably like 
Angeles County Sheriff. Six, seven o'clock. Yeah, because it's almost sundown. Yeah. In the area. Right. So maybe seven thirty to eight. Oh, seven thirty. But then that's that's ten thirty. Could hurt myself on the East Coast. It's like, and so I always forget that because when you see this, it's dusk. Yeah. With that three-hour time difference, and people were still watching. Oh, we, I was not turning this off, you know? Like, especially now, like, you're like, oh, shit, like, something about to go down. Like, and then, this may sound dumb, but for me even, it's also like, well, he's going to his house. What does he have at, like, to me, I'm like... At, especially at the time, it's like, uh oh, ball might be in his court now because right. can he lock himself in there? Does he got like secret? You know, this is the mind of a young kid. Secret passageways, like yeah, you know, like on some underground stuff. Like, yeah, it's like so. Like, so that's why I'm surprised. Court, yeah, that's now? why I'm surprised they just let this happen because at this do. point, you know, the the, the, the cops have out. some what happens? control, like. He gets in that house, like they you may lose all of that. Hurricane? You know what I mean? You like, and yeah. he, he goes in there, he pulls out a shotgun There's or a something. Like, you, right you never so know, man. Like, and, Ashford, and, that is and I, I think and cops. And right so, right like, now. this is this is his son coming up to the uh, to the Bronco. AC pushing him away. Somebody's arguing with the driver. Look at the cops yelling at him, like, get out of there. This this scene is moving the gentleman back so chaotic, man. It, it it took me a while, I'll be honest with you and everyone who's watching, to understand why this is a generational moment. Because it's up there. People look at it, Kennedy assassination, mm-hmm. the Challenger explosion, sadly after the Columbine, 9-11. People look at this like that. Those all make sense, whether you were alive. And for some of those, I was alive. I can tell you where I was for some of them. But it's like the Bronco chase with OJ? But yeah. like as I get older, as I gotten older, you and replaying it, not just as the young Jeremy who just had his birthday party at McDonald's, but as an adult, I can see like man, there's so much going on here. Who he was, like this is an insane situation, an insane moment. Yeah, because you know you touched on it earlier, Jeremy, and it, it, this is so much going on right now. Like this is, you know. So much to do with like race and class and just all of that stuff, like just embodied in this one moment of situation. You know what I'm saying? Like we touched on, you know, Rodney King and, and, and the riots and, you know, the LAPD in that situation. Like all of this stuff is going on in this moment. And I, I wasn't even noticing any of that, you know, at the time. I just, I was young and I was like, this dude's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But, you know, if, if I was older looking at this, I would have possibly felt more of that. I'll be honest. If I was older, like me in, the, in my 20s or definitely now in my 30s, um, I'm, I'm, and I love sports, you love sports, I'm probably going away from the game oh, and just absolutely. doing all this. Yeah, I'm in TNN with the same bag of chips. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just, just watching that unfold. I think the only way you get me to go back and forth, if it's, I'll be real, we're from of the Sixers, we're in the finals. I'm going back and forth. Yeah, but I'm still probably leaning toward this. Somebody greeted him. So let me ask you this, Jeremy: If this was a Sixers finals and the Sixers are playing Houston and they're breaking away from a finals game five pivotal game, how are you feeling about that at the time? As a kid or as an adult? Either. As a kid, I'm going crazy. I'm, it's, I'm pissed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would be upset, yeah. As a kid, as an adult, everything goes aside. Like, because then I really get it. Because I remember this. And even now, I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy. And then I mentioned those other generational tragic where were you moments i was a few years older for a few of them and even then i'm like oh i got the impact of it right but i look back and go man me as an adult like George, i can tell you that i'm watching you know, 9 11 i was afraid but i was i was i was still like 13 you know it was younger so it was kind of like behind the tree i didn't quite understand like why certain adults were doing some weird behaviors because well, maybe they weren't weird but like i remember right. 
uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, and I, some classmates, their dads picked him up. It's like early in the morning, and they're like, "I don't know what's happening." I went to the gun show, a uh, gun store, and bought up all the ammunition, and I'm ready. And I'm like, "What?" Yeah. I'm like, "You think they're coming for you?" And <laughs> like, what? Well, I'm like, but like when you're an adult, and you want to protect your family. I have a little more empathy as an adult now than when I was younger. I was like, "Why? Are, you think they're gonna go for you?" Like they don't know who you are, man. Like I was kind of like, huh? But see, in those situations, I get that. Like, not I get it. Like I don't get that type of thinking. But like, possibility of a trial. I get you feeling the magnitude of that, and it's just like, man, this can affect me. You know what I'm saying? Like, off of like a 9/11, even the Columbine. It's like, man, like my kids, I'm scared for them to go to school. Right, right. Like this was something like that was not going to affect me. You know what I mean? Directly at all. You know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I mean, eventually it does. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at the time where I'm like, this is, this is just a crazy situation where us, and I'm not going to put you in the situation, but I know people love to watch something like this. Like people like to watch tragedies. People like to see people crash and burn. That's right. why, again, like, time, you know, reality is TV is so popular. Like, like you, people just want to see those insane, chaotic situations. Deeper, and I think, to be, like, a number of to our point earlier, there, I mean, where it's just like, I think NBC, I think all these media companies saw that. And they were like, man, people were tuning in because they wanted to see what was going to happen. If we can give them a, something like that. For those of you who have been watching the on game, a weekly the basis, ended we hit gold, and they did. Well, um, Madison Square Garden. So we hear 61 61. Tom Brokaw gave the score. So the Rockets have come back and tied it. We have no idea how they they're did not that. even going back at this point. No. Just like to what we were talking about earlier, where this was the main thing now. Like mm-hmm. the, 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 the finals is in the way of this. So now we're not even going back to the finals. We'll give you the score for those yeah. who are curious. You know what I mean? Like, but you know, there is no checking your phone. There's no checking the ESPN app. There's no none of that. Like, you know, we're we're staying here. We got to see what's happening next. And like you said, like the Knicks were up 13 at one point at halftime specifically, and now the Rockets come back. Elijah playing well. Right before they cut away, they were just talking about that. But the game is, is it doesn't matter at this point. And, and, and the thing is, I always heard about a small box. There, at least in this coverage of whoever put this up here, there's no small box. It's it's gone, which is even more like, wow. I always heard, like, oh, they put the game in the – we haven't seen a small box. Yeah, I we have not seen that. And this is an NBC – that this is an NBC video, it looks like, you know, but um, that may come. I feel happens. like that comes That's later on, things. but I, I can be totally wrong. Um, is that a dog? Yeah, it's a dog. <laughs> I can't tell what type of dog. It's a you see a dog. dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just my uh, my mind how it goes. No, I mean, you love dogs. You, you own it. I don't own one, but I love dogs, too. So I've watched this a lot of times. Um over the years and like yeah you see when like jason gets like you see a dog just i don't know if it's the same dog because that i i see spots on that one yeah there is a tall but like there's a dog i'm always like there's a dog just chilling out there this is the coverage you get bigger than the game with Darren. that's right like, pointing out everything we 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 were uber focused on everything tell you what it's a big ass house that's nice i know house. that's a nice little little outdoor patio set right there too I'm gonna be real. I never with this footage. I'm getting stuff. I've always seen the front. Remember, right a little bit before, like a little bit ago, we got the backyard. I'd never yeah. seen all that. Yeah. Even them panning away from this, like I've seen, yeah. like the police outside and stuff. But they're giving you the neighborhood, like the street coming into the house, like. And I know you because we did a podcast back during the pandemic about OJ made in America. So I know you've watched the documentaries. I've watched them. And hearing them describe how we're trying to, like, the cops at that time, they were, like, looking back, talking about we tried to funnel him in. And and I'm trying to picture it, but I can't. Honestly, Jose, now with this shot we just got, I can picture what their strategy was. All right, we know he wants to return home. We keep him here. We got the SWAT here. Everyone, like, now I can see. I've never seen this footage before like this. It's, It's insane. Yeah, he's he's not going anywhere right now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and if, even if he tries to make a 
you know, oh, get away for it. Your AC out the, the car way. now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they, they said, and AC, I mean, for better, he was a loyal friend. He didn't want to leave him. The cops kind of yeah. made him go. No one knows. That, that's OG coming out now, right? It was a dog. No, he, he don't come out. It's, it's dark. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't come out. Yeah. Which I do agree with I, one of the cops in the OJ Made America documentary. I do think he wanted it to be dark so yeah. people couldn't see him. Yeah, he 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 definitely had a plan here, you know, and I, I know it can probably seem like, you know, he was in a bad mental space at this point which he probably was but there were some calculated things that that were happening right here um i don't know if you know because oj was not a dummy you know what i mean like oj was not he was a smart guy and i know you know he was definitely he was definitely street smart too you know what i mean like and uh, he, he wasn't the smartest when it comes to like <laughs> "Quote unquote academic, uh, right, yeah. right. But he knew how to read people, right. He he knew how to play the game. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he knew it from. Again, he was street smart, and he knew it from being around a lot of these people that he associated himself with. Where he knew what he had to do. You know what I mean? Like, and I think this was a big time case of that, where he was like, man, he was like trying to plan his next move. From he, he wasn't smart because that's how they found him. He made a call. They traced it. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so he wasn't too smart, like totally. But then it was like, well, how do you play this and how do you do this? So it is, it's, you know, interesting. And it's also, um, I think it's just crazy that we we come up on the 30th, and then, of course, he dies two months before. And wherever you feel about it, in all honesty, what really happened and what you believe really happened, it died with him and he down as he went by. Yes. And I think that's what's like, like, sometimes you kind of wonder why he was alive. Is something going to come out or are you going to find something? But even if the things come out now or something's found now, he's gone. Yeah. And every, that's why I looked at when he passed, when it came to this, what we think happened or what the truth really, or even if you think he did it, but how exactly he did it or if he I'm didn't not, do it or what, it passed away with him. Laying down in the back seat yeah, the so many unanswered questions, and it's a sad thing, man, but, you know, that's that's what happened in this situation. Um, sad for so many, so many people. How many occupants there were, of the car, were right. inside the car? At one point, the California Highway Patrol was reporting only one man inside right. the car. Man, they legit went away from the game. Like, that's still, like, and I knew this was happening. And I knew we were going to watch this, and I knew exactly what was going to happen. And it still blows my mind. Yeah, that's why we you know. talked before. I go, this is going to be different than what we've ever done on here, really, in a lot of ways. Because I'm like, it, it's just, it's it's a mix of all. It's sports is a part of it, but it's not really in a way. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And and this is this is ties again, this ties everything. It's American history, sports history, pop culture history, like there's so many things yeah. that are right developing right in front of our eyes. You know, television history, like everything. Criminal like, justice history. Right, right. Like all of that stuff, man. Like is is just unfolding right right in front of us. About thirty seconds ago. So many things have just changed, man. And I th I think the sad part is I don't think we've learned I think in some ways we have on some things, but not really. Like we we haven't really learned from this as a society. Absolutely not. And it probably will remain upside down for a long, long time after this. It's uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, and they're here. And again, you mentioned it earlier. There, you know, he comes outside. It's it's dark. You know, so of the helicopter pointing in some direction. Get a closer shot of that. That appears to be the same man who left earlier. They're trying to get people get to move thing. back. Yelling at the cops. Like, man. That may be. Well, because um, what they say, which I never really thought about Early. until it's watching the Made in America it's documentary, it's which is on mind. ESPN Plus, on mind, Netflix please. now. Yeah, Netflix watch now. That. Exiting but ring by police wanted with the SWAT them. there. If he even with the gun he's on he's him, there. if he comes out with the he's gun, they say they have to take him out of the car. Yeah, I'm I'm shocked that they're just letting him sit in there. To well, be honest. I think you gotta 
Well, I think it's the celebrity factor in all the media yeah, because yeah. I think they don't. It's not going to look good if you take out OJ Simpson on TV, right? And then even you know if you could say whatever, if he came out with like and like, hey, that's just the protocol. You got to You can't take any chances. I get it. They're not surviving that. Yeah, not that big of a name. Yeah. With all this 95 million people. Score now 65 61 Houston. We're in the fourth quarter. There you go. <laughs> so, yep, 65 61 Houston. We're in the fourth now. We, so Houston, when we left, were they down double digits, Jose? No, no, not when they cut away. I think they were down like four or five. Was it four? They cut it to four or five. And now they're up four. Yeah. How they did it, we don't know. Who knows, right? Yeah, I know. And again, this is game five of a pivotal game five of, you know, series tied 2 2. And this yeah, is. Get another there. match. I know. Palatial what are they Holmes. doing? Um, in- <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Palatial Homes. Upscale neighborhoods in <laughs> Los Angeles. For those of you familiar generally with Southern California, but not generally with this, it is just west of UCLA. You know what's <laughs> funny, too, though? Um. I've never even been to California. I've never even visited. I don't know if you ever have. I've or... been to San Francisco, yeah. So I never. So which is not close to L.A. No, I know Brentwood because I I know that town. Like like I know this town because of this situation. I I see Brentwood, California. I mean, there's no reason why I should know. It's not like it's huge or whatever. Right. I know it because when I hear people say Brentwood, I'm like, oh, OJ. Yep. They knocked the house down, right? Yeah, it's not yeah, down now. Yeah. Really killed last week as they watched this. Because if I go to LA, I'm, I, I would have drove through that. Absolutely, I would have went to the house. I would have wanted to see it. I still may. If I go there, I might do the the drive just to be like, yeah. Because uh, I've heard the uh, the address many times. To the you know, Rockingham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. There, there. Man, that's a huge property too, man. It's an American male. Now talking to a police officer in the doorway. Yeah, they had him completely surrounded. Which is probably why AC's yelling at him and frustrated because if we can see a little bit of all the police, he's getting out. He's seeing them and they're intense and they're ready to go. That adds to it. You're already worried about your friend with the gun to his head, but then you're worried are they going to get itchy fingered and start shooting? Let's just be real. Which, you know, again, if it's, this wasn't O.J. Simpson, you know, you might have been the Dubai situation language. here. Oh, uh, they don't get to this weird. point, yeah. Yeah, that's why, like, you know, I can remember someone, you, you know, I, I grew up in the inner city. Them. Like, I, I had never seen anything like this because, again, like, they they don't allow this type of – these type of apprehension tactics, I guess you want to say, like, <laughs> in a lot of places. And – this was, you know, watching this, it, it, it's just, it, again, we mentioned class earlier, and it, it's just very frustrating sometimes. Not to, like, obviously not right now, but just very frustrating now, on, like, how man, you see, you like, know, in America, how other people are treated differently from, like, kind of like you and again. things that you've seen and your family and things like that. And it's just, I remember watching that said. and having that cross my mind. Like, man, like, this is, this is insane. Like, this guy, just because he has a lot of money, is being treated totally different compared to like what I've seen in my life at that point in time. And it, it was just, I remember being frustrated a little bit watching this as well. And we can only, and that's the different the perspectives, minutes, right? So, um, being in my household and being with my family, my people I'm close with, it, we weren't saying that at all. Hmm. The only one I said it at the time, I remember my dad was saying it. I think he did. Everybody else, it was totally opposite. It was, we'll, don't be surprised if they planted stuff on him. Don't be surprised if they're trying to take him down. Don't be surprised. Like, that was the conversation happening. We understand why he's running a course. Like, they're trying to set him up. Like, that. so I'm hearing totally different. 
And it, honestly, it was if they're setting up OJ Simpson, who's rich, California, then we are going to do it to us, then no one stands a chance. So the conversations were very like different at this time for different people. Right. And you know what's funny? Like, not funny, but you know what's like really crazy to me? Like, how my emotions kind of like changed throughout with all of this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, from the very beginning, where I was like, oh my God, like this dude did it. Like, you know what I mean? He's running from the cops. And then, like, watch watching this and being a little bit frustrated and then like as the trial goes on and stuff like that how like my emotions shifted to like a different kind of like mindset and it's just like it got to one point where I'm like man like you know obviously I know two people passed which is obviously a tragedy but I'm like man like if he beats this like I've never seen anyone a person of color beat like a case like this in my life like you know it shifted to that it was just so many different you know um Cannot by any means just I, I emotions i guess you can say like throughout this whole trial process and everything the like that and then well, you know at one point where i was just like man i felt terrible for the families as well well i remember um something that was big for me was like as a family we gathered around and like was real intense it was sports like a close game Here's a side view box down, here. Man, About time. Somebody yeah, figured the button right. out. <laughs> but, like, we got around the TV. It was, like, sports or, I could say, wrestling. Like, yes, you know, that's yes. when you that's when you got real close to the TV. For this trial, when they had OJ put on the glove to try to fit it, was the only time I remember we all got around the TV, like, watching close mm -hmm. to see if that glove fit or not. Like, that – and it, the tension was just, like, is he going to make this field goal or not? It was, like, you hold, held your breath, like, is this fitting or not? So, it, it was just – this trial has memories like that that, like, I really yeah. shouldn't – it shouldn't Im imprint on me, but, like, like I do. The, the day of the verdict, I remember that clear as day and from yeah. start to finish and different people – well, I've never seen again, but I'll remember them for how they treated me or how they reacted to me that day. It's insane with this. 30 years later, it brings all that back. It still brings up that emotion. Yeah. At least Marv acknowledges they could make the transition. It really is. But it's a one-point game. The Knicks are up with, I think it was like six minutes left. Something like that, yeah. Man, it's always we always say it on these rewatches for older games. One thing I'm glad they changed is 6:49. That keep the score up, like like just keep it up. You know, we can watch the Rockets post game too. Yeah, NBA going back to NBC. There, I mean, I know, I know, connecting the past to the present, right? You know? Yeah. Little John Tesla, what was that? Round ball rock? <laughs> Bringing it back. There you go. That's the run right there that we pretty much missed. Um, so I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but like they're just giving us the run oh, yeah. down real quick, you know. Eighteen, so eighteen five. Look at it, Knicks eleven. So Knicks are coming back in the fourth. I wonder though, if you're Marv and Matt Gukas, like you know it's away. So then. Do you just stay quiet, or do you, like, keep calling the game in case it yeah. comes back? Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think they got to keep I mean? going, yeah. Yeah, you got to keep going just in case that happens. Because, you know, as you can see, it was very – like, you, you didn't know when they were going to come back to you or not. But they know that's not a, on them, so it's like, do you just keep talking? Like, it's different. You were playing well this fourth quarter for sure. And he's been playing very – bad in this series. Yeah. Lajuan had a really good third quarter. He had a terrible first half, but really good third quarter. Brought them back and you and now six points already in the fourth and he, he's you can see him out there running around. Well if you watch the beginning of this game, like the pregame, it's a tale of two different it's interesting that it's tied up at two apiece because go through the first four games, Olajuwon's playing well. Yep. His supporting cast is it for that's for Houston for the Knicks, Ewing's playing bad. His supporting cast is playing well. So it's interesting that it's 2-2 like that. Yeah, lucky for both teams because if, if, if that's like, if Ewing plays well and the, and the role players are playing well, then you, the Knicks might be up through, like, this might be over. You know what I mean? Or yeah. up 3-1 or something like that and vice versa, you know? 
wonder like this crowd like you know what I mean like you're live at the game and you're I don't I don't know if they're getting updates on this OJ thing you know what I mean like I don't know if it's on well, the jumbotron I don't know like any of that if that's going on well I think from stories I've heard press row they they got little TVs up yeah. there so okay. they're getting that makes it sense. yeah and then I don't I got been in the garden but it was obvious it was much later like in the 2000s I went in so I don't know the garden, the 90, you know, that concourse. They yeah, show, like, okay. they have yeah. games on TVs. Like, but that could be the Knicks, like, MSG feed. So maybe they won't cut away. So I don't know how many people are really uh, notified about what's going on. And watch the quick move here by Elijah Watts. A quick little head trick, yeah. a little juke, gets himself in a little... Yeah, he can't defend that. World, though, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, I know 30 years is 30 years, but it's just like you don't now you're wondering, do people know? Where it's like, of course, you know, you know what I mean? Um, remember, and what was that? Well, it had to be 2011, it was a Mets Phillies game, Sunday night baseball, yeah. ES, and when we found out that Bin Laden had been yep. found and killed, and I remember like it was a close game, but it was like late in the game, and then the crowds roaring. And you're seeing people with smartphones holding it up, and like the broadcasters are like the last to find out. Yep. But they the USA chance, and that's 2011. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's crazy. But I think they also finally, after that, put something up on like the Jumbotron. After the, it had been a little bit. Right. Like, yeah. But the crowd was showing it, and then yep. ESPN, Dan Showman, they're saying it. And then you get that. Yeah, because I do remember that. I remember the crowd just going. You can hear like a rumbling star in, and then next thing you know, everybody's looking around, and you knew something was up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On that. But it's uh, it's those moments right there, not to make it like this, but it's the truth. Sports is important for us, for so many people, what it's done for our lives, but. There's moments that are bigger than not the you know bigger than the game, yeah. and and this is one of them. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree, I think you're a fool to be, you know to be like this. Why well, keep it on the game? Like that is just huge. It's yeah. one of the most famous, recognizable people in the country getting charged with a double murder on the run. Like that's a big story. That's a huge story, and yeah. a uh, well loved individual. You know, like, it's, and again, like, just think about, for us, it was big, you know what I mean? Like, think about guys like the older generation, like your dad, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, guys like that who watched him play and was like, you know what I mean? Like, and to see his, like, his entire career, like not only just playing, but after post, you know, post NFL things like that, like just watching all of that unfold, and then having this happen, like that had to be to them, like was insane. Oh yeah, because even for a figure like OJ, who wanted no part of race, he's a racial trailblazer. You know, I know those Hertz commercials, getting all that attention, like that was groundbreaking, and so for a lot of people. If you watch at this time, a lot of black men will say, I looked up to him. He was a father figure. You know, he I, he inspired me to play football. He inspired me at a time in my life. Like, so absolutely for older generation. I mean, the first guy to run for 2,000 yards, he won the Heisman. Like, it, it's... At USC. You know at what I mean? USC. Like, which was a big deal. Yeah, these guys now go. These teams are going back and forth now, trading baskets, and this game's intense, man. And they're just going to Olajuwon all day. Wow, no foul call. I know. And that that should definitely have been a foul. But maybe that's a little cooking. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Pavetta is here. <laughs> As Tim Hardaway called him. Yeah. Oof. Harper. That was a nice mm. move there. I tell you, though, it's, it's like the game's a lot different. The shooting is, like, like it's just, like, it's subpar. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are wide open, too, missing shots. 
Yeah, so like it, it is interesting to just watch like you know the greatest of these players, but man, it's like the game has just changed so much. Yeah, even that move, that move is unstoppable, man. And he's hitting the Knicks with that three or four times in this quarter. Oh, I thought they were breaking away. What's the genuine moment? moment? He's all the time. Ah, yeah. These are great. Yeah, that's a great. That next team is great. Well, would you have guessed that 30 years after this, the Knicks still don't have a championship? Yeah. <laughs> 1970s, a long time, man. Yeah, the lot, and then they won in 73, and, you know, we've had 50, now we're 51 years and counting. And then this team is beloved, and they haven't won anything. No. They're beloved, I mean, to us. I mean, now they're starting, the Knicks, it's been so bad, they're beloving that one Carmelo playoff yeah. run. <laughs> Lynn Sanity, I'm like, God, that's embarrassing. For that is embarrassing, yep. Y'all hyping up Lynn Sanity. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that Carmelo. T I go, that was a – y'all didn't do nothing with Carmelo, man. I'm like, come on now. They had one, one nice run there. For the second round. Yeah. <laughs> That's a run for them. Yep, for the second round. I'm like, all right, we go. Proud of this. You know, we, we got – coming up next week, we're going to be doing – on the late 90s Knicks, the Van Gundy Knicks. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, like, but I, I I, I think more interesting is the Riley Knicks over the Van Gundy. But I like the Van Gundy Knicks better. I do. Yeah, I, mean, I know you've mentioned that to me before, and I, I, I'm i the opposite. I like this. I, I'm, I'm more of – I lean towards this team a little more. But, yeah, that, that Van Gundy Knicks team – was an interesting team, and we, I can't wait to get into that team next week. Uh oh, the Jet. The Jet. He who would have known? Yeah, who would have known? I mean, we are we are watching an NBA game, and I know, you know, there's been a lot of news about like, you know, next year and things like that with NBC. We touched on it a little bit, you know, getting the NBA back and what that's going to look like. Hopefully it's different from this cover today, but, you know, we talk about Kenny Smith. We talk about that great show all the time. You know, we reference that TNT postgame show and that TNT NBA today. What do you think, Darren, one more year that you think we'll see them again after next year? I, th I think in some – I don't know if you'll see everybody, but I think you'll get a couple. I think they, they definitely want to keep – they want Barkley. They got to have – because it's it's different than the other major sports where I think you can have your favorite NFL show, but if it goes away, you got the other net. Like, it's not like right. what? Even now, uh, in college, uh, in a college game day used to be it, but now there's other ones. I still yeah. like game day the best, but there's so many more that if game day went away, it wouldn't be it. If this like the NBA went away, I mean, ESPN's coverage is a joke. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, and I'm glad it's getting a lot of, like, that's getting how how terrible it is is getting a lot of like attention on well, social media. Yeah, I mean we're in the final that game one halftime. Like terrible. it was like a minute combined, and it's just like go around once, and then okay, Josh Hart's gonna give his opinion when we get back, and like yeah. what commercial, Josh Hart go commercial back yeah. to the game. I go, what's the don't have just keep it on Doris Burke and Reddick and Mike Green the whole time. Yeah. Like, what's the point in having them? Like, they getting paid to do nothing, to fly out there. Yeah, yeah. And then the, even, like, and I know the NBA today, they, they joke around a lot and things like that, but there's some analysis in that show. You know what I mean? Like, may, maybe definitely post-game and things like that. And, and, again, I know they have – they do a lot. You know what I mean? But there's some analysis there. Like, with this ESPN show, like there's like there's not a lot of analysis, and, and Mike Wilbon's on that, and I love Mike Wilbon, and I hate that he's on that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just because I, I feel like to he's losing some credibility, which is hard to do for him. But it's just like man, like you don't you you, you don't deserve to be on there. Like you're you're much better than that. 
They don't give me the Kevin Hart unplugged crap. I don't want to watch that either. Yeah, no, I'm I'm cool, man. I'm like, y'all got the Manning cast. But I don't need the Kevin Hart cast or NBA yeah, yeah. games. Yeah, they're 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 definitely hoping to to get that Manning cast on these other. That Tony Danza. Uh, I look like him. The uh, so the OJ NBC thing let's quiet it down because they they're staying with the game. Where you want to be by Budweiser, Beachwood Age. This is interesting. Do you go back? Would you have gone back? I mean, you're at the crunch time of the game. What what would you have done? Jose Ruiz, you're the programming director of NBC Sports. What would you do? Yeah, I think after every stoppage, I might just be checking in and just letting mm. folk, giving folks an update because it's different where, you know, Marv Albert's not going to give an update on the O.J. Simpson situation, right? So you've, you've already, like, just – you know, you you spent so much time on that that you got fans invested in that, so you they want to know what's going on. Yeah, eight blocks. Oof. Um. So I, I'm checking in consistently. Like, you know, when that timeout would have happened, we would have been out there. But I mean, I know you got to do commercials too. But I, I would have checked in a little bit, came back to the game, and again, you like you said, it's crunch time, a minute minute fifty left. Like, you can't miss too much of the game, but. I've been always curious, man. Like we talked about earlier there. I mean, like if something's going on right now in that OJ situation, if they would have just cut away from this moment right here, that would have been. I think they would have. That would have been. I mean, we bad. did see the side box. Oh, this isn't big shot yeah. Rob yet. But it's, uh, I'm about to say that we're <laughs> big shot Rob at there. Uh, the the quote unquote. Uh, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I like really. him. So do I, but yeah, people are making me not like him. Yeah, he's not a Hall of Famer. No. Yeah, you want to put him in the Alabama Hall of Fame? Go ahead. Go, <laughs> go do that. That's fine with me. Yeah, and that was the Knicks' problem, I feel like. They have a lot of those guys that'll, that'll get you like those hustle points and rebounds. Yeah. But they just did not have that other score, man. Well, you know what makes me think? Because I, I love Scottie Pippen, and I think it's so criminal that he's so disrespected because I think obviously Michael's the best player, but if Michael doesn't have a Scotty, he's pretty even with these Knicks and stuff like that. The difference is he had a guy like that. Imagine if Ewing had a Pippen type guy who could do it on both sides of the court. He has a ring. He at least one ring. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely did not have that to take that take that pressure off of off of him at this time of the game, you know. Someone to be able to create their own shot. Starks really I mean, he can get his own shot from time to time, but in a situation like this, he's he's not doing that. Move. Man. Lajuan, I'm, I'm shooting that. I ain't passing that. He was wide open, but. Mm-hmm. With this 94 Rockets, I mean, I don't know, we can go back the last 40 years, 45. Has a, someone won a title with worst supporting cast? I don't know, man. I. That's, it's hard to find anyone else than this team. Now, people point like, oh, Robert Ory, like you mentioned, like the Hall of Fame talk and stuff like that. But okay. he, this he is a free throw. Yeah, he developed. I know. He's not big shot anything in this game. But, mm-hmm. you know, he developed into a nice player. Don't get me wrong. Like, Sam Cassell developed into a nice player. But he, this team was not a good team. Like, you know, they won a championship, yes. And, you know, obviously you have to be a good team to do that. You know, but... I think this this the greatness of uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, and and if they play, you know, a better team from the East, you know, if they play the Pacers, do they win this series? There, I think the Knicks are better than them. They're more more talented overall. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I think that's the credit to Hakeem, and in the role play, they stepped up at the right time in the next two games. Yeah, like they did, but I mean. 
this is why I, I, I will always rank him over Shaq. Mm-hmm. Because Shaq never won a title with a team like this. Shaq had a number two guy. Or, honestly, a, a, a 1A when he won titles. And, honestly, with D-Wade, he was one, Shaq was two. So, I, I, I never, Shaq didn't do this. And remember, Hakeem is older at this point. He's been in the league 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, I can't go there. We, we've, had, we've had this discussion on the show for sure before. I, I couldn't uh, put Elijah one over Shaq. I'm not saying Shaq is that much higher than him, but I just, I don't know. I, I can't do that. Oh, kill me, man. Kill me. I'm just saying. I mean, we can't name... A, wor- a guy winning with a worst supporting cast. Even, even I'm thinking Giannis. I don't think Giannis had a worse support. Chris Middleton was an all star. Yeah, Drew, Drew Holiday is an all star too. Yeah. I can't give it to Giannis, even though Giannis was impressive. But look at Ori just can't again. score. Golly. He's like two for nine. He went under his legs. <laughs> Just bodies. Yeah, and it's a jump ball. I ain't going to lie. Man, people complain about three-point shooting. And they shoot a lot, yeah. But they had to clean this up, man. This is. Yeah. No, I, I definitely get that. This is hard it, 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 It's sloppy. So let me ask you this, Jeremy. And this is sloppy. But. Is this harder to watch than a team just chucking up threes all game? And, you know, because the thing is with this with this game, and I, I 100% agree, like, they definitely had to clean this up. But I, I just think, like, the NBA is so predictable at this point where it's like whoever makes threes is going to win. Like, it, that's just the bottom line. And here it's like you can have an off night, play good defense, and still make a couple shots and win the game. I, I don't know. I just think I, I'd rather – Take this ugly, then just watch a team chuck 45 threes and, and, I hate miss, that too. and miss so many threes. That uh, it's not even I, fun to I watch. I hate that, too. I, I, I like that it's more open, but I like that. You know what? I mean, granted, with the coverage, we missed it. But I, I've always said this on the show. It felt like when you came back back then, oh, it was a real comeback. Where now, yeah, you can come, you come back. I'm not taking it away from you. But it's like you hit a lot of three. You got a couple times a lot of threes. Here it's like you really is that work defense for it. was tight, mm-hmm. and you were you really had to go on a run. Where sometimes I watch a game and there's a comeback, and like they didn't really go on like the greatest run. Like the other team still was scoring. It's just they weren't hitting the threes like you were. Right. They were they were trading two for threes pretty yeah. much. And so it's it's. Yeah, because if different. it's a big lead, like 17, 20 points, I'm like, yeah, they're down twenty, but. You can come back pretty quickly now. So I I hear you. I still think like people, the bad boys, the bad. You watch a bad boys game. That's great basketball to watch. Yeah. This is what did it. This is what really like. This is hard to watch. Like, and this isn't a regular. This is like this. The your finals. Best. Yeah. Like, and it's it was, it's a sloppy game. Like, mm-hmm. now we missed the rocky comeback. I don't know how nice that was. But if you watch this game, it's tough, it's physical, it's intense. I love all that. I grew up on it. You did too. But it's it's like, yeah, it's not good to watch. No, no, it's it's hard to watch for sure. I, I'll definitely admit that. And it's like, yeah, you can play good defense, and that's great. But what's the score? Like low 80s at this point? Mm-hmm. And it, it takes a certain fan to like this type of basketball. Like, we like it. You know what I mean? Like, we're fans of the game. But young viewers right now are watching this, and they're just like, they don't understand. Like, they don't have the full knowledge of what's actually happening. They're just worrying about dunks and, you know, scoring and things like that. And that's, you know, the NBA had to make a shift at this point. Now, was it good for the game? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I would say no, but I I do think it's obviously more exciting. I mean, that's and that's what they want. I think it's both. I think because you had a guy like LeBron and you had Steph Curry, they, these generational kind of guys, KD, they, they were exciting to watch. So And it helped them, you know, the game open up. So you got these great scores. Um, so I think if you're just being 
I think it helped to an extent, but um, I think also I think it helped where you get younger kids who feel like I can do it. Where a lot of times, even growing up, I don't know about for you, even people, I'm gonna make it to the NBA. What was always hurt, but you ain't that tall. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because what we loved in the '90s about the dunk. Yeah. Pretty much. Kind of like you had to cross over a little bit going into two thousands with and one and stuff, but here's the three point shot. A lot of people are like, I can make it. I can be Steph Curry. He's not that tall, but right. I can't be him. So I do like that part of it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Majuan two Got three, Wandy. Everybody that, shocked you know, that his center made that. <laughs> yep. Nowadays, that he'd be expected to make it. Yeah, and he probably would. Yeah. Now, that's one thing I'll give Elijah over Shaq. Like, I think you can you can put Elijah in any 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 era. You know what I mean? Like, even today's era. I don't. Shaq would have a tough time in today's era, obviously. Yeah. I think I think any area before that Shaq would be fine. Lajuan, he would be fine in any era. Now Lajuan played deep. Look at all the steals he got. Yeah. Footwork. I mean, Lajuan was was the guy, man. And you look at like in the NBA's best era, it was the best era of big men too for a while. Like he was winning that battle of first team all NBA. Like it was him. Is he the greatest defender of all time? I'm good at the Bill Russell. Yeah, okay. Well, he, he's up there. Right? You yeah. Know, he, uh, Pippen's up there. Matumbo's a great defender. I put GP. Yeah, for sure. I just think he, he I mean, he was protecting the rim of and like you mentioned, those steals. Like, he, he used to get a lot of steals. Mario Evans has checked back in. It's hard. I mean, just what Bill Bill Russell really just look at that terrible turnover. Sorry, that's, that's the Knicks for you, man. Yeah. Pat Riley's like, ah, it's not James Worthy. <laughs> look at that terrible pass. No, it's such a bad pass. You think he saw like he couldn't win with this because the next year is his last year and he goes to Miami. I know there was like financial stuff, but you think there's a part of him that thought like I can't win with this team? Yeah, I think yeah, I think he exhausted the talent level at that point. You know, it's terrible inbounds, but yeah, I think he exhausted the talent level here. Like he, this is the their peak at this point, and he figured he couldn't win it with this team right now, then he, he was never going to win it with them. So he, was, he went to Miami. He's been there ever since. Yeah. So this might have been the biggest, the most amount of time they stayed on the game since, what, the end of the first? True. True. Good point. So they did. So that's why it's good to watch this because it, they, you do get the crunch time of this game, and there's no even small box for the Bronco. Like, yeah. So what do you think about that? The Knicks had 17 free throws to the, the Rockets six in this quarter. A little home cooking. Nick Bavetta. A lot, they were going to the lodge one a lot. So the fact yeah. that yeah. six people were going in there. Now, they were a jump shooting team, Houston. They did, you know, kick it out and shoot shots, but six free throws, crazy. I tell you what, though, man, just imagine, like you said, how beloved the Nick, these guys are now. If they would have won. Oh, man. This would have been talked about. This is the best defensive team ever. Like, it yeah. would have been. They would have been. And I strongly, we did an episode also in the pandemic about the back-to-back Rockets. I believe you always hear with the Rockets winning. Well, Michael, he was gone. He was the one. I don't think you hear it as much at the Knicks win. That's that, that bias 
it would go down. You wouldn't hear that. You would hear it, but not as much. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah we, we had fun doing that back-to-back -back Rockets episode. And, and if the Bulls get there, what happens? Like, Yeah. Yeah, that's, fun. that's our 2020. But, hey, that's why I give it because you look at it, Shaq could have had one more. I said that on purpose. Shaq could have had one more ring. Barkley could have had a ring. Uh, Ewing could have had a ring. So for that era, it's not just Michael Jordan stopped these people. It's Michael Jordan and Akeem Olajuwon stopped all these Stockton and Malone. Yeah, Dave Go, Robinson you know, early. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 two guys, not just not Michael. It's Michael and Hakeem stopped a lot of people from winning, and that's why I look at it. Both of them together. That's the game. Maybe the strangest game in NBA Finals history. Yeah. No, and immediately there's no post game. You know, we're not kicking it to Bob Costas at the post game. No, we're kicking it to Bob Costas to cover, you know, the OJ Simpson situation. Marv went right to that, you know, so. And boom, Good here we go. I'm Jan Carson. There have been stunning developments in the OJ Simpson story tonight. Simpson and Jan led Carson. Los Angeles police on a 15 They'll go to Tom's. More than an hour on this LA is like a Houston way. coverage, I believe. Yeah. She got the rocking colors on. I don't know if she did that on purpose, but. I know, right? The latest word is that OJ Simpson has surrendered to police. We go now to NBC okay. News for the latest on the story. So he surrendered at this point. Faces a mountain of See, he's dark. His ex-wife, Nicole, is dead. So pitch, that means it's, it's black black at that. Cold, but it's, so it's got to be close to 11:30 to midnight East Coast time. Well. When OJ was told today that he, in fact, would be formally charged, he left with Al Collins as police began to close in. Then, sometime mid-afternoon in Los right, Angeles, right? Because if you know, if you're not familiar with this case, like he was supposed to turn himself in, right? Because and this scene at this point, right? right? At 11 a.m., I right. think, right. Pacific time. Right. And then he just didn't never show up, you know. And then all remember, uh, I think it's 1 o'clock Pacific time, the, the commander, David Gascon, he has that press conference. Yes. He's supposed to show up. As of right now, O.J. Simpson is a fugitive from the law. And the whole crowd just gasped. Yeah. I remember so, watching that. I remember watching that press conference, too. And like, I was just like, man, like... Will hurt this myself. is a big deal. To see my yeah, I I just got home from McDonald's. I did get a little bit of that. And then, in the that was a good party too. Neighborhood, OJ Simpson. I'm sure it was. You referenced it four times in this episode, man. I had a good, good time. Again. That's my connection to this day. I don't know what I was doing this day. Could be his 15 year old son. That's how I remember. The negotiation. 15 year old son. Imagine you Jason up, Simpson. Yeah. Now, you come up and all this yeah, shit's going on, and your son's out there. Save the juice. Go save the juice. Joe. So he's honestly, what, a year or two older than you, like, you know, at that time. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't comprehend any of this stuff, so I'm sure he didn't know what was going on. Maybe, maybe he did. I don't know. Well, I mean, it makes a man out of it. Like, he had to grow up even faster, sadly. Like, George Lewis is just outside you know? now. George? Yes, he's just but this is... The, uh, Los Angeles police uh, that they're going to have a news conference very shortly at their downtown headquarters. We've seen Simpson friends and, and family members hugging and kissing each other uh, in jubilation uh, with the news that he has surrendered uh, without uh, doing anything violent yeah. himself. Very, but, a very happy group of people are standing just in front of us here, about a block east of the... Uh, I think we, we, we can look at it and just see uh, uh, when people think of the trial of the century. So I, how soon, uh, and maybe you can, you know, I think we're, we're good with the coverage here, I guess. Uh, yeah. Unless you want to keep going. But. No, 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 we're good. Yeah. Signing right, out. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it's like, do you think this is to the trial of the century if you don't have the Bronco chase? No, I, I don't. Like, I think it all played, well, it, it definitely added to that. Like, I, I'll be, I'll be honest. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Cause I, I just think all the drama with this and then like, it just built the anticipation for the trial. You know what I mean? Like if we don't see any of this and he turns himself in, like when he was supposed to at 11 AM or whatever, I, I, I don't know. And then the trial happens and obviously the trial is still going to be a big deal, but I think this added so much anticipation for the trial that it, it just made the trial that much bigger, in my opinion. What, what do you think there? I think it's it's a big deal, but I, I think this made it where it's it's the king of 
trial. It's unquestionably the the biggest trial, not the most important trial, no, but the biggest trial of the 20th century. Like I just think you, you, you like this took it over the edge because now it was like what what what, and then he's charged. Imagine if he's charged, he turned himself in. It's like maybe you might get like, and they were trying to hide him probably. Yeah, at Parker Center, but you maybe get like a quick glimpse of him going in the there, and then you don't see him, and then it's just you're waiting it out, and then it's kind of like it's lingering. This made it like it's the spectacle. It's did he do it? It's wow, he really fell hard from grace, it, and then it gave his anticipation. And let's be real, we're not the the business gurus, but probably at that point, at this June seventeenth. People start to think how they can make money off of this. Absolutely. And I, I think what it also did was there was going to be media coverage on that trial, no matter what. Like, I also think this escalated that even more. You know what I mean? Like, and just everybody had to cover this at this point. And because there was so much coverage and it was, it was so much viewage also, like there was so many people watching this that I think it just made sure like these media streams or markets or whatever like you know or these media companies made sure like they had extensive coverage on this because they knew people wanted to watch what was about to happen you know and i think this kicked it off and it just kind of shifted like you said to from a media perspective to a money-making perspective i mean let's look at it we don't have the card kim kardashian the card we don't have that without this trial and without what happened this night because Robert Kardashian became big starting this night with reading at that press conference. So, I mean, so many things you can point to that, like, connect with all the – Court TV came from this. Like, it's just insane. So, it, it really changed our society, and that's what we watched right here. And, uh, you know, so many people, they remember – I remember McDonald's. Jose remembers his thing. But I remember like all this because things just changed after this, and it's uh, it is truly a where were you moment. And I don't care it's Mike, like you said, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, whatever the case would be, the great big icons, Michael Jackson at the time. This was going to take precedent. This Bronco Chase was bumping whatever that night. Yeah, this was this was history making, and and and, and, and I'm glad. I hate what happened, right, to these families and things like that. And I'm sorry about the dog if you can hear that. But um, I'm just glad I was able to witness history here at this point. And, like, it, it was definitely history. And I knew – I didn't think it was, like, history, American history at the point when watching it. But I knew it was big time, like we talked about earlier, Jeremy. And I knew I was watching something I may not ever see again. And I'm just glad I was able to watch that live. Yeah. And it, it makes sense because uh, our society – and I'm not saying we wouldn't have gotten there for better or worse anyway without this, but we can pinpoint, and I think it's crazy to have the footage, you know, like the Kennedy assassination, you get some footage, but it's still black and white. It's not the same. But now we have the footage and we can show, you know, you, you have a son, I have a young niece. We can show them like, hey, this is a pivot point in our society when it changed. Yeah, no, and it, it shifted a lot of things, you know, and again, but, you know, it's funny, like our generation was, you know, we started out, right, with no social media, things like that, you know, and no instant news and stuff like that. Like all of this was, you know, we had to wait or stuff like that. Like, you know, with the CNN stuff, we started to get that a little bit, 24 hour news coverage and things like that. But I, I think this, watching this and seeing, like how it just shifted and changed from how media covers just everything at this point, you know, and how it changed from like cable to like social media and all that stuff, like online, th online media and all that. Like it's, it's like looking back at some of this, it's almost like funny. Like, wow. Like how was I able to just like wait to 6 PM to see the news? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, without getting yeah, yeah. It instantly, you know, so it is, but again, it all started here and, you know, it was. I'm glad I was on for the ride. You know what I mean. So, this this was cool, man. To look back on. Yeah, and um, 
I, I think it's it's important. Every June seventeenth, this gets talked about, but on those big anniversaries, it gets really talked about. Um, I know Lifetime had a documentary I haven't watched yet, but they had a two part documentary the other weekend about uh, supposed the Cole sisters yeah. did yep. it. And, um, I, I heard it's good. I haven't seen it. I, I do want to watch it. Yeah, I watched the uh, first one. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So I know uh, Kato Kalen has a pot. Like, you know, that's a sad part. It's a business. Like, Kato Kalen was a, you know, had to testify in it. He has a podcast, different people, the pilot. So it's, um, I've heard that there's going to be more documentaries coming out. But um, I think it's important to take time to really look at it and see how it changed and really do your homework and really look at it and get, why certain things happen, whether you agree with them or not. Take a second to look at why things happened and understand where people were coming from then. And I don't think the ultimate question is, have we learned from it today? Have we gotten better? And I think that's what's scary. It's like, I, I don't know if we have gotten better. I don't know if we haven't taken a step back. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's a great question, you know what I'm saying, like that we can all ask ourselves, but I, I just also feel there, I mean, like everything that you just said, but like just like people need to understand like the magnitude of this situation, you know, like that's, that's, which is hard for even me to say, but let's put aside like what happened to these two families and things like that, which was obviously terrible, but no buts, but like just that one piece mm -hmm. in itself is like a huge thing. But the man who did, like, the the man I was suspected to do in it, and then just everything that followed, excuse me, after that, like, just piece by piece by piece, it was just so much drama associated with all of this that, like, even to, even for me, who witnessed it from the beginning, from this day, right, like, from the very beginning to today, still, I still can't grasp how big this was, you know what I mean, like, We've done episodes on this. There's been plenty of documentaries, me sitting down, like even to this day, my, I can say if he did it or not, whatever, I can feel that. But, and we talk about this all the time, even on the show and off the show, Jeremy, where it's like that OJ made in America. That's semi yearly. I'm watching that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and yeah. every time I watch that, I get different emotions where it's like my perspective where I'm at in life at that time. Like it's, totally different where how I'm looking at that. And I just think that's, that's just such a different, like, I don't get that any, with anything else, no game, no other situation for like, let's put aside personal stuff, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just things like this, like, I don't get that anywhere else where my perspective changes almost every time on it, or I just come back to an old perspective or I get pissed off again, or it, this is the only thing that this happens to. And I, I that still blows my mind. Yeah, uh, I'm someone who is not a true crime person, and maybe there's people in uh, right. I'm not either. Who are and I and I don't judge anyone, and everyone is different with it. I know there's some reasons I understand why people are in the true crime that are valid, and there's some that I don't think are valid. But that's a different story. But this, there's this is the case that I'm I'm a true crime fan, like the big ones. Like I am, I've read book. I'm all about it, and there's so many things with it because as we see we're in a time when you watch this where there's cable there's tv but that information is not all out there like we would have it today so then there's things that like we don't know the local stuff we don't know the la beats that was happening back then and you get that perspective you know the media portrayed a lot of stuff that gets left out people don't remember like, oh, different other deaths were happening at that time at that Mezzaluna restaurant. That doesn't get brought up. Other, so there's just so many different things that make you go back and forth on did he physically do it or not. And I think what's hard for people is you can buy a letter of the law. Without a shadow of a doubt, you have to prove it. And I think that's what I always look at people. When you look at this trial, is there no doubt? And what the thing is, though, we've seen that so many times with people of color. There's doubt. It doesn't matter. And we need to be fair here. Was there doubt? And to me, 
constantly there's doubt. Constantly there's things that are people messed up. I honestly, I, the pilot, um, Zoe Tour, who first got, I watched a, a podcast, a Kato Kalem podcast. I think it dropped 10 days ago, but I watched it this morning while I was at work getting ready for tonight. And, you know, the story about when they discover the bodies and then Tom Lang and Van Adder and uh, Mark Furman go to OJ's house because he's next to Ken. And then they were like, you saw Made in America. They were like, there's so much evidence. We got to go over there, hop the fence without a warrant to make sure he's okay. And Zoe Tur's like, I had the police stuff. That's a lie. He's like, we knew OJ was in Chicago. They were already calling him a suspect. So they made that up to be able to go hop over the fence and do all that stuff. Which, guess what? I never knew that. And guess what? How can you say for sure hearing that already, like uh, there's doubts about it, that he didn't plant evidence? They left a lot of doubt there. And I, I just, you know, I, and, the, and the defense did a great job in pointing all of those doubts out, you know, and they left the jury at a point where it was like, you know, we, we're not sure. And if you're not sure, then that's, you know, you have to, he has to be not guilty. Yeah. So this is, uh, like, we know this, this it's a little bit long, but we hope you stay through and watch it. Uh, this is a different episode for us. Like, we don't usually, you know, do something like this, but for this event, uh, something that we're both passionate about, definitely sports, but obviously, you know, uh, criminal justice activism, and, yeah. and then this trial, it, it was important for us to do. So, um, you know, let us know what you think. You can follow us on Twitter slash X at Bigger Game Pod, on Instagram at Bigger Game Pod. And if you want to talk about, you know, hey, share stories on you remember where you were when this happened, what your feelings are, how this has captivated the country. 30 years later, we're still talking about it the same as we were back in 94. It's insane. It is insane, and and remember, there was a game we just rewatched too. You know, mm-hmm. and um, it was a it was a big game, and it was a really good defensive game, and we didn't even get a chance to talk about it too much. I mean, we talked about a couple players here, a couple runs here and there, but you know, the majority of this conversation was how they covered everything, and it. it I just think it was such a fun conversation to have, like. Cause even coming into this, Jeremy, I wasn't even sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we, how mm-hmm. are we going to do this? And cause June 17th is a big day. You know, they had this finals, you had this OJ thing, New York Rangers, you know, parade, Arnold Palmer's last golf outing, whatever. What do you call that? You don't call that a game, right? It's like a U- US Open. Of, yeah. It's last rounds. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So it was so much was happening on this day. The world cup. World cup. Yes. Yes. That was the one I was missing earlier. I was telling somebody, um, but this trumped all of that. You know what I mean? Like, and that's how big this was. So this was a lot of fun, dude. Like I, I had a great time doing this, man. Me too, man. I'm glad we did it. So uh please like, subscribe, comment on our YouTube channel. Also do the same. Like, subscribe for our podcast, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. So for my tag team partner, Mr. Jose Ruiz, I'm Dermy Dove. Thank you guys for watching. We could in the game with Dermy and Jose. Peace.